Hi, I'm Sartika1. I endeavor to give you novel arguments regarding abstruse topics. So, today what I'd like to talk about is assigning chiral designations like R and S to molecules that are displayed in a Fisher projection. This skill is very useful on many standardized tests like the MCAT and is also useful on standard and non-standardized tests in biochemistry and organic chemistry. Um, particularly where you're going to run into this is in questions about monosaccharides and, uh, and, and sort of the chirality of monosaccharides. And this is, this is true because historically, uh, you know, around the turn of the, uh, of the 20th century, uh, people like Emil Fischer were instrumental in sort of describing what monosaccharides were like and they needed Fisher projections to easily communicate with one, in, with one another and unambiguously describe the structure of, of a small molecule containing so many different chiral centers. Here we have a hexose having four chiral centers, so it's critical to be able to distinguish between these easily. Um, so whenever you have a Fisher projection, basically what you're doing is going from a three-dimensional uh, real thing to a two-dimensional representation of that. Now when you do that, it's sort of very easily, it, it's, very, it's very easy to lose detail. However, if you properly understand a Fisher projection, you actually don't, and you can go back to the three-dimensional thing just with the two-dimensional picture. Now the first and most important thing to recognize when we're looking at this Fisher projection is here the, re the red and left atoms depicted in, uh, I'm sorry, the right and left atoms depicted in red and green are coming out towards us. Now, as you may know from kahn ingold prelog rules of assigning priority to substituents, the smallest or, or, or least, um, the, the substituent having the least priority, usually a hydrogen, um, cannot be coming out towards us. Rather, it must be going towards the back. But when we're talking about monosaccharides, that's always problematic because as we can see here in a picture of glucose, every single time, in every chiral center in this molecule, the H group is going to be depicted as coming out towards us in the Fisher projection. As a result, in order to be able to do this quickly and well, it's useful to have a system uh, that we can use to rearrange the chiral centers and get the correct configuration quickly and easily every single time. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do in the next half of this video, and I'm going to give you three different ways of doing it. Finally, when we finish the video, what we're going to have is this basically the same picture without the picture on the right, and we're going to be able to assign chirality to it very quickly and very easily. All right, so without further ado, here's option one. Option one is you take the chiral center that's given to you in the Fisher projection, and you don't rearrange anything. Rather, you just assign priority. So here, bromine is first because it's the biggest with an atomic mass of 79.903, then chlorine, then the methyl group. So as you can see, that goes in a counterclockwise fashion from 1, 2, and 3, giving us an S designation. Option 1 tells us to do this, but then assign the chiral center as R. In other words, ignore what you've gotten as the result and choose the opposite, and that will give you the correct designation every time. Option number two. So here, what we're doing is we're switching the H with one of the two groups, either Cl or CH3, doesn't matter which, and then we're going to assign priority and do the same thing as option one. So here we have Br, on the picture on the right, we have Br being one, Cl being two, CH3 being three, and that once again gives us a counterclockwise designation, which is S, so once again, just like option one, we must ignore that and designate the chiral center as R. Um, you, you might wonder why to include this one. Some people like it better. It's basically slightly more work than option one, so I recommend one over two. Option three, however, does have a distinct advantage. However, it's also a bit longer to set up. So here what we do is we switch the H and CH3 groups or the H and CL group. Then we switch the remaining two groups, the one we didn't choose and, and the other one. So as we can see on the right, I've switched the H and the CH3 and then the CL and the BR. So I have BR being number one on top, then CL being number two, then CH3, which gives us a clockwise or R designation. When we switch gr both groups like this, as we do in option three, the designation will always be correct and does not need to be um, switched from R to S or R, R to S like in, or, or sorry, S to R like in option one. Now, as promised, here's a picture of glucose again. Using option one, two, or three, 
we can quickly and easily assign any of the uh, chiral centers as R and S. Um, so let's practice doing so. You can you can pause the video and do um, number two on your own, and then I'll, or or you don't have to. I'll do it right now. Um, so the OH group has the highest atomic mass um, uh, th that it's first bonded to. So that'll be the first group. The aldehydic carbon is number two because it has a double bond to hydrogen, whereas carbon three only has a single bond to hydrogen. And then the rest of the molecule will be priority number three. So using option one, we go from OH uh, to, to aldehydic carbon to uh, carbon number three, and that gives us a counterclockwise or S designation. That designation must be wrong. So the correct designation is the opposite. Um, so so carbon, carbon number two should be an R carbon. All right, I hope that helps. I'm Sartika1. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you can do Fisher projection conversions very quickly now.